Now we move on to our second topic of the night. It is hemolytic uremic syndrome. Now hemolytic uremic syndrome, although is uh, more of a pediatric topic because it is the most common cause of acute renal shutdown in children, but it is obviously important for elderly as well now with, uh, you know, you see increasing number of patients coming to you. Uh, with hemolytic uremic syndrome, which would have been diagnosed otherwise as acute renal shutdown. So, the, at the core of hemolytic uremic syndrome is infection with E. coli H7057 strain, which produces a special toxin known as virotoxin, which is also secreted by uh, Shigella species of gram negative enterobacter AC. And then, uh, in case of Shigella, it is known as Shiga toxin. And because this is being secreted by E. coli, so we can't really call it Shigella toxin and it resembles Shiga toxin. So it is known as Shiga-like toxin. The presentation is with bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain, fever, seizures, that is the neurological presentation and lethargy. In the labs, you would find hemolytic anemia. All the pictures of almost of DIC with microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, schistocytes, thrombocytopenia because of the consumption of platelets, and of course, because of plugging of the glomeruli uh, with the platelet thrombi, platelet rich thrombi, you will have renal insufficiency also. So, the chief complaints usually are bloody diarrhea, which may be the presenting complaint. See below regarding suspected E. coli infection we just discussed, bloody or red urine can be the chief complaint. So these are the ones that you have to see in the question paper. Low urine output may be another initial complaint. So in the question, you have to look for these three important uh, findings, that is bloody diarrhea, presence of blood in urine, that is hematuria, and decrease in urine output, that is acute renal failure. Patient's history would be there, which is suggestive of uh, HUS, is consumption of undercooked beef or unpasteurized milk. So this might be mentioned in the question statement as well. Along with, they might have mentioned that there has been a recent or a past diarrhea. So recent history of diarrhea, often bloody, that is dysentery. So there might be a history of dysentery, which would be an easy tip off if it is followed by acute renal injury and jaundice or anemia secondary to hemolytic anemia. Clinically. The patient would have petechiae purpuri, which can be seen on the physical exam. Anemia will be detected on total blood count, as would be thrombocytopenia. There would be increased creatinine due to acute kidney injury, presence of schistocytes on the blood smear, and if you culture the stool specimen, then you would find E. coli, O157 and H7 strain, which is the most common strain for this disease. Syndrome, as we discussed, it is pretty common seen in children. Infective etiology is the most common and nowadays we see two types of uh, HUS. One is typical HUS which is having the history of uh, infection and second is atypical uh, HUS which now is seen also in case of streptococcus infections but the atypical ones are usually associated with drugs as we shall see now. So, in the infective etiology, most common we've already discussed is E. coli, EHEC, which presents with acute diarrhea and secretes shiga like toxin, that is virotoxin, and it is classified under typical HUS. The Shigella species uh, also produces typical HUS and it has got its own shiga toxin. Streptococcus pneumonia causes HUS, but this is an atypical HUS because it doesn't present with diarrhea. Similarly, other conditions presenting with atypical HUS are the drugs, mitomycin C, cyclosporin, cisplatin, even cocaine can do that, quinine can do that, and rarely tacrolimus and interferon alpha are responsible for HUS. 
The classic triad of HUS would be thrombocytopenia, thrombotic microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, and acute renal shutdown. If you go back and look at the DIC, the triad would be thrombocytopenia, decreased fibrin, and increased D dimer. So the triad there is this, of course, along with bleeding at the cannulation sites. In HUS, thrombocytopenia occurs because of the platelet rich microthrombi formation in the walls of smaller blood vessels, including arterioles and capillaries, causing consumption of the platelet, leading to thrombocytopenia. Along with that, there is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, which is non immune hemolytic anemia, as you, will, as you see here. So it is a non immune hemolytic anemia. That non immune means it is Coombs negative. So whenever we see hemolytic anemia, it should be described as immune or non-immune. So if it is immune, you should be thinking about warm antibody, cold antibody. But if it is, and, and of course, it's Coombs positive or direct antiglobin test positive. So here it is Coombs negative along with presence of acute renal shutdown. Now the disease can be worsened, that is HUS can actually be worsened if you give anti-motility drugs in EHEC diarrhea and can also be worsened if you give antibiotics in enterohemorrhagic E. coli diarrhea. Now, why this toxin, how does it play its part is that this toxin binds actually to the glycosphingolipid element found in the cell membranes throughout the body. Now, this damage that ensues leads to increase in thrombin and fibrin levels resulting in microthrombi being laid down. These microthrombi, they lead to platelet consumption causing thrombocytopenia. Microthrombi present in the blood vessels also lead to mechanical destruction of the RBCs calling, causing hemolysis. As the blood cells are being hemolyzed, there is further increase in platelet consumption leading further on to thrombocytopenia. So it's a vicious cycle that keeps on happening again and again until there is frank bleeding. The Shiger toxin has high affinity for globotriosyl ceramide, which is also known as GB3, membrane receptor present in the glomerular epithelium and tubular cells, which causes widespread damage resulting in glomerular necrosis, cellular apoptosis, and microangiopathic thrombosis leading to acute renal injury. Now, very often you get a question on differential diagnosis of HUS. So, there would be TTP, DIC, HELP syndrome, and systemic vasculitis as a very you know, potent uh, differential diagnosis for HUS. In case of DIC, fever history is not important. For ITP, it is not important. TTP, it happens, yes. HUS, it happens, yes. So these are uh, overlapping syndromes, the HUS and TTP. Of course, they were usually earlier on, they were clubbed together to name them HUS TTP syndrome. Splenomegaly will be seen in TTP and HUS both, but not in ITP and DAC. Although in ITP, splenomegaly can be present and the presence of splenomegaly uh, can alter the treatment because then probably uh, after you have given steroids, after you have used all the uh, treatment measures, and if the patient still continues to have thrombocytopenia, then splenectomy would be required. The platelets would be low in all of them. Bleeding time will be prolonged in all of them because it is the platelet dysfunction. PT will be increased in DIC. PTT will be increased in DIC, but it will be normal in HUS. So coagulation studies, that means PTT, INR, and PT. So all of them will be normal in case where there is no DIC. So you can safely say that the patient doesn't have DIC if their PTI, INR, and PTT are normal. Schistocytes will be present in DIC, TTP, and HUS, but in ITP, it will not be present. All right, let's see a few questions and few statements which have appeared in the exam earlier. A seven-year-old girl is brought to the emergency department because she has been having bloody diarrhea for past week. So she's a seven-year-old girl 
she's come to emergency department and she's having bloody diarrhea for past week she has been complaining of generalized fatigue for the past two days uh, she has temperature of 98.5 she's taking cardiac she has normal respiration and her bp is 105 by 60 she has a presence of pallor as well as clearer ictus on physical exam the liver is not enlarged not tender the lab studies show severe anemia at 6.1 mean corpus clear volume okay leukocyte count elevated at 17000 reticulocyte count elevated at 13% now a point here is reticulocyte count more than 2% is suggestive of hemolytic anemia and then platelet counts are decreased so we have hemolytic anemia we have thrombocytopenia and we have history of bloody diarrhea so this is hus And, and the histories of a child. So recent history of bloody diarrhea plus anemia plus low platelets is HUS. Now next question: A five-year-old girl is brought to the clinic because of decreased energy, bloody diarrhea, spots that cover her arms and legs. The mother has noticed all over this for the past two days. So history of bloody diarrhea. No notable past history. The immunizations are up. There is no record of the patient had no joint pains in the clinic. The little girl temperature is ninety eight point nine, and the physical exam demonstrates lethargic and a weak child. Child is an extreme disease. Bolan edematous. She has creatinine two point six point two platelets decreased. Creatinine two point four. So we have a triad of anemia. thrombocytopenia and acute renal failure so this triad along with increased bilirubin due to hemolytic anemia suggestive of hus in the urine this child has some degree of blood some degree of protein uh, wbc is 50 per hpf so What is the most likely diagnosis? So the diagnosis is HUS, recent history of bloody diarrhea, fatigue, perpre, anemia, low platelet, increased indirect bilirubin, elevated creatinine, renal shutdown, presence of protein, blood, WBC in the past suggested of hemolytic uremic syndrome. Similarly, next question is about an eight-year-old boy who came to the ER due to abdominal pain and fatigue. So the chief complaints are abdominal pain and fatigue. The development of abdominal pain happened about a week ago, and also has been experiencing both vomiting and diarrhea as well. He had noticed significant stool in his diarrhea last four days ago. However, this has resolved. His mother thought he was improving until he developed more diffuse abdominal pain today, and was very unwilling to get out of the bed. The patient has been drinking normal amounts of water. However, he has Not urinated for the past twenty six hours. Many other family members also suffered from nausea and diarrhea this past week. After they all attended the same family cookout last week, so undercooked meat. However, this patient is the only one who still has not fully recovered. A physical exam reveals scleral ictus, diffuse abdominal tenderness, and two plus spitting edema. What diagnosis could explain this patient's condition? So, patient has pain abdomen. this patient has history of diarrhea although not bloody but diarrhea yes and edema and scleral ictus so these are signs of pain abdomen is a sign of sign of hemolysis uh history of diarrhea Another question about another child, five-year-old female, brought to the ER because she has colicky abdominal pain, vomiting, loose. Treated with supportive care. During this episode, her urine was red in color. So, image urea. The patient. physical exam is with normal limits with exception of conjunctival pallor and to 
in point five low blood pressure is HUSTTP. So recent history of bloody diarrhea, anemia, low platelets, and elevated creatinine indicated as HUS. Another question, almost similar, but you must look for a recent history of bloody diarrhea, presence of anemia, jaundice, low platelets, elevated creatinine. Edema, puffiness of face can also be mentioned. So they all indicate towards HUS. So the questions can also have features like uh, oliguric, recently had history of diarrhea, frankly, bloody stools, lab studies show elevated bun, elevated crack, and blood smear. So in this question, PBF is also given presence of fragmented erythrocytes, that is schistocytes. So again, this answer is HUS. All right. So this is the next question in which again, a peripheral blood smear, not only that it has been mentioned, you can see the BBF and you can see all these RBCs, schistocytes, which are eaten up, which are broken differently seen. So they are all schistocytes, all of them abnormally looking. They are all schistocytes. So recent history of bloody diarrhea, renal failure, anemia, low platelets, and presence of schistocytes on blood smear. It is HUS. Similar last question: A five-year-old male has a fever and acute renal failure. Stool specimen culture over 157 at 7 E. coli. What is the diagnosis? It is typical HUS. So, this is about DIC and HUS. Feel free to ask any questions. And in case uh, you have any question, you can forward it to the academy and we can have a session where we can answer all your questions. Thank you very much.